What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So as we close in on the Game Awards, of course, there are gonna be a lot of predictions around what new games could be announced there, or maybe what old games could be announced there, as one appears to have leaked out a bit early, and uh, we'll go over that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about another partnership that Sony has now announced, this one bringing up some questions around Sony's path forward into mobile gaming. And we're also going to be talking about Dragon's Dogma 2 as we got the full release date and a ton of other details. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button. Helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're going to start today with EA and a patent that was discovered very recently, despite it being filed back in 2020. And this patent outlines the idea of putting you in the game least somewhat, your voice actually, maybe for the main character. Well, we can see this posted up. This is over on Eurogamer, who was citing the patent. Now, again, this was submitted back in 2020. Quote, a computer implemented method of generating speech audio in a video game is provided. The method includes inputting into a synthesizer module, input data that represents speech content. Now they go on to describe the method with a voice converter and other parts of it really comes down to, I assume it would have you say so many lines recited back and then it would figure out a way to basically take your voice and then just expand that over the course of a game for a main character. And I mean, it's an interesting idea, I guess. I do wonder if that would also work into the idea of AI being involved somewhat when it comes to applying your voice over the the many, many lines a main character would say. It's, I guess, just another way for character creation to continue forward and being more immersed with a character that you created at the beginning, but it would also still, I guess, technically save them time and money when it comes to voicing all the lines themselves with a specific voice actor. So there's pros and cons to the whole thing, I guess. But this is still just a patent. We'll see if EA decides to act on this in the future on another release. Also, we do have the release of Skater XL coming up here pretty soon. In fact, we can see this was posted up over on the Skater XL Twitter account saying in eight days, it'll be releasing on the Switch. So that would be uh, six days actually from today, the 29th. So look towards that next week. But they say they bring you the responsive physics-based game feel that has come to define the genre in buttery 60 FPS. And this is going to be interesting to see how this one turns out because the game, while it's not like a graphical showpiece, nothing like that, it, it, when it first came out, I remember it wasn't necessarily the easiest thing in the world to play for a, a PC at the time, and they have worked to optimize it since then, and it, it plays pretty well on the Xbox currently, and that's typically where I will play the game, but I am curious to check out the Switch version when that does release, and maybe we'll check it out further in a video on release next week, we'll see. Oh, and do you remember how a while ago we talked about randomly an update for Batman Arkham Knight and how they had a new suit that was being added, but then they pulled it back. And seemingly it was just a mistake. Well, it does appear that that suit from uh, the, B the Batman, right? The most recent movie with Robert Pattinson, is coming to the Switch version, the trilogy coming up here actually at the end of this week as a timed exclusive suit. In fact, we can see a new trailer that they released for it and I'm still curious how Arkham Knight is gonna work out on the Switch. I think that's what most people are interested in seeing, the performance on that one and I'm sure Digital Foundry is chomping at the bit to, to get their hands on it if they're not already testing it right now as the game is coming out December 1st, so we're coming up on it here in just a couple of days, but yeah, the suit, it was meant for the Switch version as people were kind of speculating on, and you'll look towards that suit also going to the other versions of the game later on as it seems to be a timed exclusive for the Switch. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with a game that I feel like is being set up for a big reveal and shadow drop maybe at the Game Awards, and that is the 20 year anniversary for Beyond Good and Evil, and it does bring up questions around the sequel that's seemingly been floating around for a while now, but this game appears to have just outright leaked completely from the Xbox store. When I say completely, 
I mean, apparently people were starting the game up off of Ubisoft Plus. Well, fortunately, while the page is just gone now after being live for what seemed to be about 30 minutes, Wario64 did just copy and paste the text and description from it. So we can take a look here. Uh, now this is the Beyond Good and Evil 20th Anniversary Edition. Again, listed on the Xbox Store. However, this to me feels like just a multi-platform release from Ubisoft. So. At this time, I'm expecting it on everything, as, uh, of course, back in the day when it came out, it was on all platforms, Xbox, PlayStation, uh, GameCube was on PC, so that's sort of what I'm anticipating here. However, the features will, of course, vary between consoles, specifically, like, okay, what will the Switch have versus, we see here with the Xbox, embark on this epic adventure in up to 4K, 60 FPS with improved graphics, controls, and audio, along with brand new autosave and cross save features. So this, I think, is, I feel like this is a good idea just in general. It's been a while since we've had any kind of inkling of the, the second one. Is it even a thing anymore? We don't know, but really there are a lot of people now who are just were not familiar with Beyond Good and Evil when it came out again 20 years ago, 2003 on the GameCube, the Xbox, and the PlayStation 2. By the way, back then, we had these staggered releases for systems, and I remember looking back on this recently. This was a game that came out, like, the I think at first it came out on the PS2, then a couple weeks later it came on the Xbox, then like a week later it came out on the GameCube, so it was a very strange thing back then during that generation before we got to a situation where games were just releasing, for the most part, across the board, on all systems at the same time. Again, we still have examples of things like, you could say Baldur's Gate 3, where it's just out basically on PC, then PlayStation, then Xbox. But back then it was much more common to see that. However, with something like Beyond Good and Evil, I think this is a good move just in general, getting it out there and seemingly setting it up for a Game Awards shadow drop. That's at least what I'm thinking now. 20 years ago, the game came out technically in November, so you get to the Game Awards, okay, the first week in December, and the game's just available now. It's also possible, while it was on Ubisoft Plus, that might have just been a mistake in general for it going live. I almost wonder if this is something Microsoft will try to pick up for a Game Pass deal as well. Otherwise, uh, maybe the there was a Beyond Good and Evil HD that was out on like Xbox Arcade, I believe, that maybe that'll upgrade for free. Otherwise, I'm expecting maybe a 20, maybe $30 purchase price on it, but I'm interested to go back through it, especially 4K, 60 FPS, apparently new achievements, and I'm sure trophies on the PlayStation side. It'll be fun to dive back into a classic, and maybe, because we're seeing this, I know it lines up with the 20th anniversary, but maybe Ubisoft will be prepared to talk again about Beyond Good and Evil too. We can uh, we can always dream, but otherwise look for that anniversary edition. I'm thinking in the next week or two, we'll probably see it get revealed. Next up, we have some unfortunate news, especially for people who were excited that Time Splitters appeared to be getting revived and we're gonna get a brand new game for it. And okay, what can this franchise look like now, especially in the world of live services and the arena shooter kind of taking a, a back seat, it seems like, with all these battle royale modes and stuff. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we probably won't ever see what they were gonna be able to come up with at Free Radical because they're being shut down in like two weeks. Well, at least this according to VGC we can see posted up, where they say, although Embracer has yet to publicly confirm Free Radical's position, sources told VGC that Wingsfurs has now acknowledged in a company email that the Nottingham UK-based company could be closed on December 11th, following the completion of a consultation process. Quote, as we move through the consultation process and face the potential closure of Free Radical Design on December 11th, I want to express my gratitude for your commitment and the remarkable work you've done and still keep doing. There's a challenging time for all of us, but especially for you and our focus is to support you as much as we can during this transition. So incredibly unfortunate stuff, obviously for fans of time splitters who really thought, I mean, we were getting something here, even if it wasn't going to be the big budget release, I mean, a new game in the series would have been really cool. Online support, some new ideas maybe to throw in the mix there, and getting the, the old crew back together with Free Radical to do it. It seemed like it all was lining up. And then uh, 
Embracer missed out on that $2 billion deal and they've been scrambling ever since with, at this time, more than 900 people having been laid off and that's just still part of their phase one which they've now moved into phase two and part of that seems to be free radical most likely getting dissolved here as they head towards December 11th. So unfortunately the, the pictures being painted here by, v, by VGC is basically like, it's kind of a done deal writings on the wall. I don't know if they're going to find any way to really bail them out at this point. So unfortunate stuff. We'll see as we get to apparently December 11th to see what the outcome is. But at this point it seems like 90% sure that Free Radicals most likely going away and Time Splitters is, uh, well, going back in the, I guess, back in the holster for a while. Who knows what Embracer ends up looking like after all of this ends up transpiring with phase two. Maybe they get to a position where they start selling off intellectual properties and okay, someone can come in and get Time Splitters, but either way, it doesn't seem like we're going to see a revival for that franchise for a long time, if ever. Next up, let's talk about Jim Ryan signing more and more deals as he's on his way out next year when he's retiring. Some people still think he was fired, and I guess he's just, he's making deals from home after getting cut out of, of Sony. Anyway, uh, we can see this was posted up over on Sony's website with the press release saying that NCSoft and Sony Interactive Entertainment announced strategic partnership. Okay, it says the two companies are evaluating a range of potential opportunities with an aim to foster strategic synergy, leveraging NCSoft's technological prowess and SIE's global leadership in the entertainment field. They do mention under this partnership that they will collaborate in various global business fields, including mobile. Now, there's a quote from Jim Ryan saying, partnering with NCSoft advances our strategy to expand beyond console again, beyond console, and broaden PlayStation's reach to a wider audience. Like SIE, NCSoft shares a similar vision in creating high-quality, impactful entertainment experiences for players everywhere, and together we're excited to collaborate to push the boundaries of gaming further. So, we kind of already know what NCSoft has been working on. As roughly one year ago, at the end of 2022, there was an exclusive that was released from MTN, mentioning that NCSoft was working on an MMORPG from the Horizon franchise. Now, I remember there was also some like concept art or, or something that was put out there that sort of showed the vision in terms of the visuals for the game, and people were looking at it going, oh, okay, that's weird. It doesn't look like the visuals I was expecting, like the cutting edge stuff that we've seen from Gorilla on like the PS5. It looked a bit more like uh, Fortnite-y, I guess you could... You could say, lack of a better term there, uh, and you know, now that I'm seeing this with MCSoft being confirmed, I kind of wonder if we've talked about Sony and the idea of day and date releases for live service games with PlayStation 5 and PC, but we also have to start thinking about the, uh, the, the day and date releases for PlayStation 5 and mobile, and I do wonder if one of the plans here is that this Horizon MMO, we'll say, will release on phones and on PlayStation 5, or what if it's just on phones? We're assuming it's gonna be on PS5, because that makes sense, that's basically at the center of Sony's gaming universe, but they keep mentioning going beyond consoles and leveraging an IP like Horizon and trying to get more people on board with it by taking it to cell phones or mobile and using NCSoft who knows what they're doing in that department. In their mind, it just expands their audience further. I think it makes sense though to go the path of a Genshin Impact or a Honkai Star Rail where you have it on PlayStation and then on mobile and that's sort of what I'm expecting here, but I figured they would be leveraging mobile more and more after what we see with Savage, them apparently focusing on bringing more uh, Sony intellectual properties over. And this just seems like another step in that process. So we'll see when they're ready to showcase this Horizon MMO that seems to be all but set at this point and how exactly they present it during a state of play when I assume they're going to introduce it as not only a PS5 game, but also a a mobile game. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Dragon's Dogma 2. We've been following this as we've been leading up to the stream and we figured we would see that release date, which we did. We also learned that Capcom is moving to the $70 price point as this appears to be their first shot at it, but we did have a roughly 15 minute 
trailer that went over a bunch of stuff for this game, showed off new gameplay, gave us a bunch of new details for it, so we can talk about that a little bit here. Now, the game is coming out March 22nd, 2024, which is exactly where I figured it would be, right? Like, at the end of their fiscal year, they're going to fit this game in there, and it'll work to sell a bunch of copies for them to close out uh, that financial year. But it is going to be, as I mentioned, $69.99, Xbox Series, PlayStation 5, and Steam. So there is no PS4 or Xbox One version. They are moving on completely to current gen. Visuals, they look good. Uh, to me, it looks like the the larger creatures, the enemies, that like the dragons, they look better than the environments. They kind of almost stand off of them a little. It's hard to describe. Again, I'm looking at this through a stream at the time, and when I have it in front of me, maybe it'll it won't be as noticeable. Uh, but I, the thing I thought was really cool is they tapped. Some inspiration, it seems, from Shadow of the Colossus a little bit. They're huge enemies. They're climbing all over, fighting, and seemingly have different stages to them. I also noticed that the large enemy, like, threw a, a spear or something, and it crashed through a bridge. So, I guess we're going to have some elements of full world destruction there. Really, really cool stuff that they could set up with different pieces. Now, they said it does take place in a parallel world from that first game. I feel like they're trying to say, hey... It's still Dragon's Dogma, but you don't have to have played the first one to jump into this one. So I think that's a, a smart path to take there. They showed off full character creator with photogrammetry being used to try to make the character look even more realistic, I guess, there. And they will have a standard and deluxe edition to choose from. But overall, I am looking forward to Dragon's Dogma 2. I feel like everything they showed off there probably got Dragon's Dogma fans really excited for it. Uh, it I am still surprised that it is coming out in March since, I, again, when they first showed it, it was like, hey, here's a shirt. Get ready for Dragon's Dogma 2. It felt like, okay, it's going to be a while. Nope, here we go now. Uh, four months, it'll be out right at the end of March. So exciting stuff there. Almost a bit surprising even, but from what they showed, the game looks, it looks pretty big. Looks like there's a lot going on there, and especially fans of the original Dragon's Dogma, probably incredibly excited for this. But I still think... It'd be a really good idea to release a patch of some kind for the first one, unlock the frame rate on consoles for the PS5, the Xbox, maybe the Switch even, and take advantage of some of the newer hardware we have in these consoles to try to get people maybe prepped and set up for uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Get some excitement going there by pushing your, your original game, which is like $5 on sale. And that's like a constant thing that happens, so, but either way, Exciting stuff, looking forward to March to get my hands on Dragon's Dogma 2. And before we go to the comments of the day, we're taking a look at the poll I posted up yesterday, which was Game of the Year Madness, and Mario uh, absolutely stomped all over Mortal Kombat 1, which isn't that surprising, really. It's it's Mario 1, right? It's nominated for Game of the Year in there next to Zelda and Baldur's Gate and stuff, so it figures it would do well there against a... Uh, I don't want to say a fighting game is niche because it's still Mortal Kombat. It sells well, but uh, Mario Wonder is a much broader audience. But the next matchup I'm really looking forward to, it's probably Dead Space versus RoboCop. And that's going to happen in uh, two days. And I'm very curious to see if RoboCop can get past Dead Space and just how far that game can go in the bracket. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day, as you're seeing here. This is from Brent, who says, The problem with global enemy scaling is that it stops you from ever feeling more powerful, particularly if player power is based off more than just level. Leveling up can become a detriment rather than a benefit. I think there's a balance that can be had, though. Make main story or critical path enemy static, and then have optional areas that do scale, or, as in this case, make scaling an option that you can choose. Uh, there's some about just going through the game, leveling up a lot, getting much stronger, and then just going back to that first first area, just picking out an enemy and just completely destroying it in one shot, and it just makes it feel like you have progressed, you've done something, and you've improved your character the whole way, whereas if all the characters or the enemies scale to you, and you go back and it's like, oh, I have I made any progress? I, I guess you could have different abilities and stuff to fight back with, but and there's something about just getting really powerful and then going back and actually feeling powerful. And it does make it fun. But yeah, the option, I think, is the correct path. Let the players decide. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. was Beyond Good and Evil, apparently an anniversary collection coming up and seemingly set up for a shadow drop. Are you interested in picking that one up? And then 
Also, what about Sony and this deal with NCSoft? Do you think this Horizon MMO is going to show up as a PlayStation 5 and mobile release at the same time? And then what we're seeing here with Dragon's Dogma 2. Are you excited after that stream and are you picking it up in March? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.